Welcome aboard Winderlust, I'm Joel, traveling around this planet since 15 years ago and I've been sailing these incredible Beneteau Cyclades since 2020, from Spain to Cape Verde to the Caribbean and now in Panama, already on the Pacific coast. Tune in for this episode to go through the amazing Panama Canal, straight from the Caribbean Sea into the Pacific Ocean. In the early 20th century, there was already a plan to build a canal in the Nicaragua. But the higher elevation, greater earthquake and volcanic danger, and potential for instability were strong, negative factors. Day 1. Goodbye Atlantic, hello Pacific. First day of the crossing of the Panama Canal from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Left the marina at 4 p.m. with a crew of line handlers, composed by a Colombian, a local Panamian, an American and a Danish car. Around 6 p.m. a traffic advisor joined the crew. And this is Jim, a line handler from the United States, a scuba diving instructor in the Caribbean that also really likes whiskey and poker and video games. Maybe that's why he showed up a bit drunk on the, on the day of the departure. But it's all good. You are also welcome to apply for my next trip. To apply, just send an email to sailing.winderlust at gmail.com. The first step for crossing the Panama Canal is to book your visit of the admeasurer. Okay, then you will come, you'll check the boats, and then you'll get the further steps, namely paying them 3,000 bucks, of which 1,000 is a deposit. On, on the day of the start of the transit, you should be anchored in the Lemon Bay, just outside Cologne, where a team that will bring the traffic advisor and technical advisor will join on the boat. France was the first nation to attempt to build a canal across Panama. In 1881, a shareholding company founded by Ferdinand de Lesep, builder of the Suez Canal, attempted to dig a sea-level canal across the Isthmus. But in the end, it was way more complex. Meet another line handler, Julie from Colombia. It's funny that the name is Julie Mar, which actually means Julie C. So it's in her name already. And also Ida from Denmark, a proud Danish backpacker moving around in Central America. And that's me, João. The transit started at 6 p.m., but the first locks were only passed around 9. It was already dusk when Winderlust passed under the Atlantic Bridge. After which, the first locks come. Got one locks. If you're enjoying this video, please support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash winterlust. It's a great way to keep this channel updated and to produce more videos, of course. After a long wait, Winterlust sped through the first locks. The queue was so busy that she entered the first ones at 9 p.m., which then was incredibly quick to bring the water in. And after two more locks, Winterlust rose to 30 meters high in altitude. Her personal record for sure. The canal was completed in 1914 and became the great links between oceans serving both commercial and military traffic through the decades of the 20th century. The United States administered the canal zone as a territory, holding total sovereignty over every aspect of its activities, considering it to be American soil. On January the 1st year of 2000, the Panamian flag was raised over the canal where it flies today. Under the terms of the final treaty, the United States of America would have the sole right to intervene if the canal ever came under foreign or domestic threat. Still on day one, water, water, water. Water flows massively into the locks, fresh water this time. Lucky she, when they're lost. Less corrosion and a clean up on the hull. It was impressive to feel the water pumping up inside the first locks during the evening. The water level rose really quick. The system that it is in place here is incredible. When the United States finally decided upon the Isthmus of Panama, which was a province of Colombia, the government was not willing to come to terms, asking far too much money for the rights to build a canal. Then, in the conclusion of a treaty, the United States was granted full sovereign rights to a zone 16 kilometers wide and 80 kilometers long, over which it would have full jurisdiction and fly its own flag. And it was within this zone that the Panama Canal would be dug. On day two, Winterlust was already on Lake Catoon. 
30 meters high in altitude and here at Gatun Lake the ambience is calm and the water is not salty anymore. Tomorrow winter lust reaches the largest ocean on this planet and is back on the salty liquid. Because it was decided to build a canal that was not on the sea water level, then there would be the need to make an artificial lake. The Lake Atun is the largest artificial lake in the whole world and it was a necessary construction in order to have the canal in place. The main issue here was to have a lot of current from a non-tidal sea, the Caribbean, into a very, very tidal ocean, the Pacific. That would bring massive, massive loads of water just to compensate the tides and that would very quickly destroy any lock system. Tourism plays a massive role in the Panamian economy. Tourism is predicated upon visiting the ecological reserves, viewing the canal and most importantly the buying of real estate for second homes of retirement. Special tax exempt zones have been established to make either temporary or permanent living quite appealing, but maybe also not so fair for everyone. Generally the average toll is in excess of $100,000 for a single transit. When descending already into the seawater level, the first locks that you come through are Pedro Miguel locks. You can already feel the Pacific Ocean ahead. And after it then come the Miraflores locks. It's quite impressive because it's full of tourists. Just next to the lock, there is a visitor center, which is a four storage building, full with tourists waving at you and sometimes even asking you and shouting, where are you from and where are you going to? The Gatun locks are still part of the first system to have been put in place in the canal. In 2016, the United States built a second set of locks that started operating by then. And today there are always two ways parallel side to another where the boats can transit. The newer one is only reserved to the larger ships, the really, really, really big freighter and container ships. Either way, it's more spectacular to go through the old system of locks. And then, on the day two, the Pacific Ocean ahead. By crossing the Panama Canal, I just arrived in a new ocean, the Pacific, where incredible destinations are multiplied by the water that links America to Asia, Australia, and all the way to India. How easily can an ocean take you there still amazes my soul and excites my mind. And in between there are endless turquoise water paradise islands of microstates that fulfill any sailor's utmost dreams. So stay tuned for what's coming after. This is just the beginning. And also beware, I mean everybody says that Panama doesn't have hurricanes, but it has a lot, a lot, a lot of lightning. So beware of that and think about it. What would you rather have, a hurricane or a lightning? Let me know in the comments what you think about it. You are also welcome to apply for my next trip, which is leaving Panama into two weeks of coastal navigation here for surfing, scuba diving and obviously sailing, and then leaving to French Polynesia and eventually stopping in the Gal... And that's it. This is the episode 16 and I hope you subscribe this channel. Keep up with the next episodes because, I mean, there's more coming definitely on the next episode. I will, uh, I will share with you the maintenance that I've been doing on Winterlust since I arrived here in Panama.